Hi everyone and welcome back to Phoenix, Arizona. Can you believe it? We have made it to game day. I'm Rob Blackman. My radio broadcast partner Bobby Riddell is alongside and we thank you for joining us here in Phoenix. We are taping here at the Team Hotel as we have done most of this week on our special edition of the Boiler Ball pregame show. Um, we hope, we hope we're visiting with you tomorrow as well, fans. Mm. Talking about uh, Purdue's preparations for a national championship game. But first things first, Bob Riddell, we finally made it to game oh. day. Feels like we've been here for about uh, three, four, five weeks. Uh, but all the pomp and circumstances finally behind us. Uh, all the different interviews and media requests and the, uh, and the parties, not for the players, but for alumni and all the get-togethers and all of the things that have, have us uh, had our time consumed this week. All is, and they're done. They're out of the way. They, they're, they're in the past. It's finally game day. It's finally game day. There, there's no doubt about it. It's the excitement level now. All these pregame butterflies are really starting to rush in. And I'm sure the, the players, obviously, they got to be super excited to finally be able to get out there on the court and lay it on the line against the Wolf Pack. Uh, it's been a long time since last Sunday, right? Purdue <laughs> yeah. celebrates their, their trip to the Final Four. And uh, you know, now it's, it's Saturday, finally. And um, yeah, there's been a lot of really cool festivities media obligations, things of that nature for the team, and, and obviously a lot of the fans that are here. I've had a great time being able to see some of my former teammates uh, the last couple days, but uh, now it's game day, and now you and I got to lock in here for a good broadcast, and uh, hopefully the, the team's ready to, ready to roll here at uh, 3.09 local time. Uh, we are taping this mid-morning here in Phoenix, and the streets are buzzing with old gold and black. Uh, just about as far as the eye can see, there are Purdue fans everywhere. <laughs> it's really phenomenal to see, like just walking the streets, black and gold, uh, here in the team hotel. You go down to the lobby, mm. and it's just people wearing Purdue gear left and right. So it's, it's really exciting. You're, you, know, you go on social media, people at the airports taking pictures of themselves with their families as they're traveling to Phoenix. Um, it might feel like a home game. It might feel like Mackey West here today, which is gonna be phenomenal because the Purdue support all the way across this NCAA journey has been phenomenal. And uh, it sounds like it's not gonna stop anytime soon. All right, so let's talk about the matchup. We've, we've been teasing you all week. I've been saying we're not gonna talk about North Carolina State in, until we get to game day. We're, so we're at game day. Uh, Bob, they're an interesting story, no doubt. Uh, they have won nine straight elimination games. Uh, starting with their, their own conference tournament, knowing that if they lose, their, their season is over. Well, they've risen to the occasion nine in a row. That's an incredible mark. Well, you said it, elimination games, and that's really what it was, right? It was win or go home for them, at least from a you know NCAA tournament national championship perspective, because uh, they would not have made the NCAA tournament from a resume standpoint if they don't win the ACC tournament. They you know go to over, they, they're down double digits to a Louisville team. Obviously, it was not very good this year early in that ACC tournament. They in the semifinals pull a miraculous overtime win over Virginia, and they've hit their stride at the right time. Of course, getting hot at the right time is always what every team is trying to do and the Wolfpack have been able to do so uh, for them to be able to beat the Duke Blue Devils in the Elite mm -hmm. Eight. I mean, a team in their own yeah. conference that's an arch rival of theirs in North Carolina. Uh, I can't even imagine how over the moon the Wolfpack fans had to be to get that win. They, of course, have not been to the Final Four since 1983, so uh, pretty close to about as long as drought as our, our Purdue fans had to go through. So uh, this Wolfpack team is ready to go. They're loose. They, they play with a lot of swag. You know, we saw them walking through the tunnels with the boom box. Oh, yeah. And they're kind of dancing and jiving. Like, these guys uh, are loose and ready to play. Uh, they're obviously extremely confident. They play in a big-time conference as well. Uh, so it should be a fascinating matchup. So that game against Duke that Bob referenced to North Carolina State actually trailed by six at the half uh, and then shot 73% as a team in the second half to win that game. Uh, DJ Burns, who we're going to talk a little bit later in the show about with assistant coach Paul Lusk, he's going to join us to provide us a really in-depth scouting report on North Carolina State. He had 29 points in that game. Uh, and he is real. Like, I mean, he, he has become really the uh, the darling of this tournament, yes. uh, and for a number of reasons. First of all, he's a very very skilled player. Coming out of high school in South Carolina, he was the third highest rating, rated recruit coming out of South Carolina with his graduating class. So he's a very talented player, but he doesn't necessarily look the part. Uh, he, he has a great personality on the floor, off the floor. So he's really become the darling of the tournament. Uh, darling or not, this guy is a hell of a player, and Peru's going to have their hands full with him today. They certainly are. We, you know, you and I stood by next to him in the mm -hmm. tunnels there at the arena the other day, and he is a big man. He is a very big man. Obviously, not quite as big as our guy Zach Eady, but uh, he has got some girth to him. You know, he mm -hmm. really's got big, broad shoulders, uh, and that's going to be fun to watch him and Zach. 
uh, go at it. You know, I'm not sure if they'll be guarding each other at all times, but there should, I'm sure throughout the course of the game, uh, at some points there'll be some mano a mano action and that'll be fascinating to watch to see which guy can get the upper hand. Uh, but yeah, he can really facilitate from a big guy perspective, kind of reminiscent of our guy Travion Williams not too long ago with, hey, if, if you do a poor job doubling him, he's mm -hmm. going to pick you apart. They're a really good cutting team for layups. They got some guys who can make open threes. Um, and, and so it's, it's kind of that conundrum whenever you play a, a guy with, who's as good as DJ Burns is on the block. Teams face that same conundrum when they, when they play Zach Eady. Do you guard him one-on-one? -on -one? Do you double? Uh, what sort of scheme do you try to use to make him uncomfortable? Uh, against Duke, clearly whatever Duke was doing was not making him uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, they do have a, uh, North Carolina State does have an Indiana connection. Jaden Taylor, Indianapolis kid, uh, played at Perry Meridian, started his career at Butler, now transferring to North Carolina State. Uh, he plays in the backcourt, but their best player in the backcourt is DJ Horn. He was a third team all-conference player this year, and he is a high-level scorer. Man, I mean, just, just a talented dude. Trying to think of guys who produced played this year that might be a little bit similar. Uh, Caleb Love from Arizona kind of comes to mind as far as like just a true shot maker. Uh, can certainly, uh, you know, make plays for others and, and set up his teammates, but he predominantly wants to try to get buckets at all times. Can score at all three levels really quick with the basketball, change of speed, change of direction. So uh, Lance Jones and, and the rest of the Boilers are going to have their hands full trying to guard him because at 41% from three, cannot give him clean looks. He's one of those guys that uh, if you're pouring your rotations out of a post double and he's left shooting open threes, mm -hmm. uh, the result's not going to be in your favor most of the time. Well, that's what Bob Riddell thinks about North Carolina State. Let us find out what the coaching staff is thinking about North Carolina State. If you will stay with us, we're going to take a really short break. And when we come back, assistant coach Paul Lusk is going to join me. Uh, and he'll tell us what the coaches are thinking about North Carolina State as they have uh, put their scouting report together, obviously, and prepared our Boilermakers for the matchup today with the Wolfpack. Uh, the game, of course, 6.09 Eastern. 6.09 Eastern. Bob and I will be on the radio at 5 o'clock with our pregame show. We hope you'll join us. But uh, anyway, for the moment, let us pause. When we come back, Coach Lusk joins me to talk more about North Carolina State and their matchup tonight with our Purdue Boilermakers in Glendale, Arizona. Stay with us. Welcome back everyone to downtown Phoenix, the Purdue Boilermaker Team Hotel. I'm Rob Blackman and as promised, assistant coach Paul Lusk is now kind enough to give us a couple of minutes of here on game day as we get you closer and closer here on our Boilermaker, uh, our Boiler Ball pregame show, I should say, uh, previewing our Boilermakers in North Carolina State coming up uh, later this evening, Eastern time. Remember, we're a 609 tip off folks at the State Farm Stadium. Okay, coach Lusk, so uh, I guess I'll start with this. We finally get to play a game. It feels yeah. like we've been here forever. Yeah, it's it's been a long postseason, right? But that's <laughs> don't complain about it. Right, Enjoy right. it. Uh, we're still playing basketball in April, but yeah, it's game day, and um, we've had pretty good preparation. There's just so much outside stuff going on when mm. you get to a, a place like this that you know. Hopefully, you have to just keep your guys kind of locked in, and I think we've done a pretty good job of doing that. All right, so let's break down the North Carolina State Wolfpack, 26-14 uh, and 14 on the year. In a lot of ways, they're the darling of the tournament. They lost their last four regular season games going into conference tournament play, and they haven't lost since. They got hot at the right time. Yeah, that's, that's what you want. You want to play your best basketball at the end of the season. I think the thing to remember is, like, those same players, while it's a different team, those same players have been there all year. They have a lot mm -hmm. of talent. A lot of individual talent. I think it just took some time for them to, to gel, and they've done that. Well, uh, most of the talk with North Carolina State has to do with the two DJs, uh, DJ Horn and uh, DJ Burns. One plays on the perimeter, the other plays in the post. What, what do we know about those well, two guys? I would, I would argue and say they both play on the perimeter, uh, <laughs> DJ Burns. Probably, like, yeah, what's, probably. What's crazy, Rob, is he is considered a post player, but he's – he gets a lot of his post-ups really at the three-point arc, and he plays like a guard in terms of the way he facilitates. Mm -hmm. So he's just an outstanding passer. Um, like whatever, whatever you decide to do with him, if it's a double, uh, he figures it out. 
and he's just an outstanding passer. They have really good movement when he's dribbling down into kind of that bully ball. And then DJ Horn is an outstanding scorer. He can really change the game in a hurry. Uh, 16 points a game for DJ Horn, actually almost 17, 16.8. Uh, DJ Burns at 13 points a game, but he had 29 against Duke uh, in their Elite Eight game. Uh, statistically, they are one of the best in the country, top 15 in the nation in taking care of the basketball. Yeah. We don't turn teams over a lot. It's just not what we do. But I would say this, if they're not going to turn it over a lot, we probably shouldn't either. Yeah, that's probably a good good idea <laughs> uh, at any time. And you know this. You've watched so many games. We've talked about it uh, all the time. When we take care of the ball and value the basketball and get good shots, we're really hard to beat. They're mm -hmm. going to they're gonna turn it up defensively. They, they're quick on the perimeter. Their guards can defend. Um, but it's nothing we haven't seen, right? We've seen it with Tennessee. Uh, we have to we have to take care of the basketball, get good shots, have good floor balance, and not let them get in transition. I think North Carolina State is best in transition, mm. um, so we want to get back and get them stopped, get our defense set. All right. So in closing here, Coach Lusk, uh, man, so much buildup, so much hype, so much anticipation, not only just to get to this point, but yeah. now to be at this point. Do you feel like our guys are ready? Yeah, I think we're ready. I think they've the moment hasn't been too big mm -hmm. uh, yet. Um, but I think with any game, especially in the postseason, it, it generally takes both teams uh, four to five minutes to settle in. Yeah. I, I think that'll certainly happen today. But our guys have really handled it the right way. Business-like approach, I think they're ready to go. Coach Lusk, thank you. Good luck. Thanks, Rob. Let's uh, hope we're visiting again on Monday, Let's fans. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, listen, fans, quick reminder, 6.09 Eastern is the tip-off tonight. Our pregame show on the radio network with myself and Buckets will start at 5 p.m. We certainly hope you can join us for that. And then uh, it is, it's our plan to be here again tomorrow, Sunday, and continue this uh, special Boiler Ball week-long program we've been providing you uh, anticipating a national championship game on Monday. That's the hope anyway, fans, and uh, we certainly hope we're able to do that for you tomorrow. We know we'll see you tonight. We'll talk to you tonight from the State Farm Stadium. For Coach Lusk and Bobby Riddell, Chris Foreman, I'm Rob Blackman. Thanks to Corey Palm working behind the scenes all week long for us. Boiler up, hammer down, and we will see you at the State Farm Stadium.